Welcome back everybody. This is an interesting one because I have been on vacation and now I'm back doing a new video. So if it seems a little clunky, just, just get back into practice. Two interesting facts that are just came in through the news today. Uh, the first one is the Fed has increased, is about to increase the interest rates. And a lot of people are gonna be worried about, is that going to affect their business? And throughout history, from my understanding, is it will not affect your business. It doesn't even affect the real estate market at all. People will continue to buy homes and just continue marketing and the business will come in. You might see a slight, slight dip, but your business will not fail and it will not go away. Second fact is you'll start to see a lot of fluctuation just recently in the real estate, I'm um, not real estate, in the stock market. And this is actually a normal trend too as well. The stock market during a time of an election during October does traditionally dip. We also have a lot of bad news out there too as well with COVID. Then you have the presidential election. The stock market typically from my experience it reflects poorly with news. So since the news is not that great, the stock market drops. Throughout history, the stock market goes back up during November and December. So I don't recommend selling all your assets. <laughs> that being said, I am not a financial advisor. I'm a home inspector. So take it for what it is. <laughs> Talking about inspecting, I have a 1600 square foot home, 1985. It should be particularly easy. I just am a businessman too, and I like to look at those things. So let's get at it and check out this property. Okay, starting this one, a uh, little bit easier, but that is always relative, right? It's just, when I say easier, I mean less steps I have to take to actually make it through the whole property. Uh, we, since this one's probably an investment property, actually it doesn't even matter. Your property is always an investment property, right? So we wanna focus on five major things. Roof, foundation, electrical, HVAC, plumbing, and plumbing, yeah. Come on, Chris, you can name them. So, <laughs> Uh, you want to focus on those five major things. And if those five th major things, if something's wrong with them, I'm not saying don't buy the property. What I'm saying is to budget to fix or replace it or know that you might have a problem down the line. So let's uh, go and start with the first one, the roof. So starting with the roof, the first thing that you might notice is the discoloration. Discoloration does not mean your roof is going to fail or if it is even older or underperforming. Discoloration is typically gonna come from your trees in the area and then also the Houston environment. Uh, it will discolor the roof. It will not cause it to underperform. So let's focus on some of the deficiencies on this roof. Your most common deficiencies on your roof is your plumbing jacks, your penetrations on your roof or your vent or your bonnet vents here. A lot of these get chewn up by squirrels because your trees are too close shoot the trees don't even be close i can i've seen them jump a whole yard to make it to the roof but uh they like to chew on these lead jacks i recommend not using lead jacks maybe use the rubber ones people in texas like the lead jacks because they hold up to the environment a little bit better but then we have the squirrels they like to chew on them to sharpen their teeth uh, the bonnet vents right here, this rust doesn't mean that it needs to be replaced. I recommend to paint these. I make sure that they're, they're not compromised. I'll poke them a little bit just to see if there's any damage. But overall, it will perform. I'd recommend just to paint it. Next issue on this roof is you'll see these little dinks right here on the roof. Uh, these are known to be hail damage. As you can see here, it's not spread throughout the whole roof. It's actually just isolated in just a few spots. For insurance purposes, it will be 10 dinks over 10 square feet. As you can see, that is not 10 marks. And uh, um, I'm not an insurance person. I'm a home inspector. So what I do is I let them know there's hail damage and then they can take action. I will let them know that from my experience, this will not rate for a insurance claim. The next problem area we have, we can also see this flue is not painted as well, but they actually did not install the storm collar correctly. The storm collar should be here at the base. And you can see they've had issues with leaking because they have heavy caulking around the base right here. 
This storm collar actually needs to be lowered and I'd recommend to paint this to prevent the rust from continuing. Uh, this is a very common defect that we find on most roofs. Another common area for defects is actually the chimneys or the chimney flues. You want to pay special attention, especially in the attic area, because this can cause issues with rot and moisture intrusion around the property. I'm not saying this one is leaking, I'm just saying you want to pay special attention to this area whenever you're in the attic space. More defect to pay special attention to is the granule loss. This happens from a poorly trimmed tree. You can see where this tree was rubbing across this roof at one point in time and it's damaged the shingles. Uh, I'd recommend to just replace this few right here just to prevent future water leaks. So a final opinion on the roof. I would say it is performing, but you do have a little bit of hail damage. You have some flashing that needs to be improved and we want to make sure that we check out that chimney area. So. Do I say it's everything is okay? No, I don't. I do recommend for a roofer to come in and take these items because water only needs just this much space to make it into your property. Uh, do you need to replace your roof? No, uh, it is older, but it will work. Okay, so the next area is your foundation. Well, this one is a hard one to cover whenever you're talking about your foundation because there's a lot of factors that come into play to determine if your foundation is moving or not. It's a whole story of a property. It's not one little crack. It's not one little hairline crack that goes through the brick on the exterior that determines if a foundation has failed or not. So with that being said, let's focus on some of the areas that will help determine if your foundation has moved. So the first area that you want to look at is in between your, your exterior veneer and your windows. This is one of the best spots to look is if you see any type of separation in, in this area, this can help determine if the wall or the structure has moved. One of the next areas is, is between the freeze board and the exterior veneer. This was installed exactly like this from the day it was built. So if you can see any type of gap, excessive gap or separation in the freeze board, that is another sign that your foundation has possibly moved. I know this one is kind of silly, but around doors, if your doors can open and close smoothly, yes, this can be altered fairly easily, but that is one of the signs that your foundation has moved is the stiffness or cracked of windows or doors that don't open and close properly. One, uh, another trick that I like to do with foundations and uh, evaluation of foundations is I like to look down the brick line and you can see this brick line is flat, it is straight. So whenever you see fluctuations or settlement in foundations, it's going to be in this brick line. Whenever they lay this brick, they typically use a level at the time the home was built to make sure that it is straight across the structure. And if it's level back then and it's level now, that's very less likely that your foundation has moved. Another area to determine if foundation or your structure has moved is actually these expansion joints. This is one of my favorite areas to look to as well. Typically what you'll see is the expansion joint will be smaller at the bottom and then a lot wider at the top, significant, signifying that the, the wall or structure has moved or settled in a particular direction. As you can see, this has some of the original caulking in place. Uh, they've updated it at some point in time, obviously, but it is fairly original and there is no significant movement. Here's something that's funny that I see, I'd say newer home inspectors call out. They see a crack in the foundation and they're like, oh my gosh. Just one single crack through the foundation slab does not signify that the foundation has experienced larger than normal movement. This could just be a plumbing piece that's too close to the foundation wall when it was poured and you can get a crack in this part. Yes, we want to look further into it, but that crack alone does not mean that the foundation has failed. You need other factors to determine if the foundation has experienced fluctuation or um, deflection. All right, so let's move further inside and do one more test. All right, so one of the next areas that we like to use is a zip level. A zip level will help measure the levelness across the structure. So the reason why I have this uh, cardboard here is a lot of home inspectors or people evaluating foundations, they'll say if your foundation has dropped an inch and a half, that means that it's failed. That is not true. Foundations that drop an inch and a half or they move like this, the slab is still intact and it is still flat. If an inch and a half drop could just be settlement or 
it could have been poured like that. So what we look for is called deflection. And so what deflection is, is whenever the slab is flat and then there is a slight bend like this. That is called deflection, deflection, or deflection. So just because the slab is dropped, say you have a positive one and a half inch over here, and then you have a negative one and a half inch over here, does not mean it's failed. That is settlement.